Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. This is Greg, and today we're going to make some pumpkin spice candy because the season is upon us. I love pumpkin pies and pumpkin spice, and I always look forward to this season. But this leaves a question for me. Did the first settlers from England make pumpkin pies the way we make them now? And even now, do we make pumpkin pies out of what we think is pumpkin? The pot is ready, so we pour the pot of 310 degree hot sugar that's already been flavored with the pumpkin spice over our candy cooling table. It's been a while since I made this flavor before and I've forgotten how much this flavor loves to steam as it boils off and releases all the moisture left in the candy. We're trying to get the sugar as dry as possible here and the heat of the candy does most of the work for us. It even boils off the water and the food coloring and that turns into steam too. I know the sugar itself looks like it's watery, but it's really just molten sugar. Our candy cooling table does its job and cools the candy, and in so changes the texture of the candy. It starts as a liquid, it ends up as something more syrup-like, and finally becomes clay-like. And we flip it over and drip it onto the table to even out the temperature, because we need the temperature even for it to behave like the clay we need to shape this into its final design. And in this case, the design, of course, is going to be a picture of a pumpkin that we're going to put in each of the 5,000 pieces of candy we make today. We made three colors of candy. We made orange, which we're going to make into two shades of orange, the inner meat and the outer lines. We made green for the stem of the pumpkin, and we only made a tiny bit of that. But we also had the clear, and we need that clear to become white, and we do that by putting it on our candy pulling machine. So when you put amber candy on the machine, the machine folds it again and again and traps millions of tiny air bubbles. And this is good. Not only does it make the candy white by creating little air bubbles that reflect light out, sort of like the top of a wave, but it also adds more surface area to the candy when it goes into your mouth. So the flavor gets more chance to escape into your mouth and the candy tastes better. And this is being pumpkin spice? Well, it's yummy. We want you to taste it. We combined a little bit of the clear orange and the white to make a lighter orange for the flesh of the pumpkin. And we're shaping it now. Our pumpkin's gonna have five bands on it and it's each gonna be filled with this light orange. But it's gonna be outlined with the dark orange. Unlike our usual pattern, we're gonna build this from the outside in with the outside four stripes and then we're gonna put the inner stripe in afterwards. This lets us duplicate the design. So we're gonna make one side of the pumpkin, stretch it, cut in half, and we'll end up with both sides of the pumpkin. Pumpkin pie, which pumpkin spice comes from, is a very American thing. And it happened because of the meeting of two cultures. The Native Americans brought pumpkins and gave it to the first settlers, and the first settlers, of course, ate them. They were starving, of course. And the Europeans brought over the tradition of pie making. And the term pumpkin even came from the Greek. It was granted from the Greek word for large melon, which is pepion. Pepion became pompon from French, and the English changed it to pompion or pompon, and the Americans then changed it to pumpkin. The first pumpkin pies are very different than the pumpkin pies we think of today. You see, the settlers didn't have some basic things. They didn't have ovens, they didn't have a lot of pots to cook in, and they also didn't have flour to make the crust out of. Their grains they had to bring over from Europe, and they hadn't quite established growing them in North America yet. So, what they did was they took a pumpkin shell that was emptied with some flesh on it, I assume, and they filled it with sweet things, sweet cream, various spices, and they ended up baking that in the embers of their fire. And this produced a sweet treat at the end of a meal. But the pumpkin pie didn't stop developing with the European tradition of a crusted pie, and that's what we have today. And people still bake pies like that. I haven't tried to yet, but I think I'm gonna do it this Thanksgiving. And I've linked to a recipe for how to make a pie like this in the description of this video. Now that we have the two sides of the pumpkin, all we've gotta do is put it together around the center piece of pulled orange, and our pumpkin is done. We just have to do the stem and the outside wrap. The next question that bothers me is, is my pumpkin pie made of that orange pumpkin that I carved jack-o'-lanterns out of? And the answer is, probably not. The next step in this process is to put the green stem on. And to keep the stem from getting crushed, we're going to make a little buffer of white around it to support the green stem. So what's in your can of pumpkin? And the answer is squash. It just may not be the pumpkin you think of that's orange. 
You see, the FDA allows any mixture of Curcubita pepo or Curcubita maxima, which are two families of squashes, to be in those cans and still to be called pumpkins, as long as they're sweet, golden-fleshed squash. That means various squashes that you know about are probably in that can, and in fact, they tend to taste better in a pumpkin pie, so why not use them instead of the pumpkin that was grown for its appearance and for jack-o'-lanterns? If you ever make it by Tallahassee, Florida, we're right off I-10. Please feel free to drop in. We're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. most days. And while we don't make candy all day long, we're open for 15 hours, we do make it on most days and we do make it a lot of times and you might be lucky enough to catch us making candy. We make it right out front and that's why we call our candy public displays of confection. If you can't make it to our store, you can still get our candy online at www.pd.net and there'll be a link to it in the little letter I that's on the top right corner of your screen. Now that we've tapered the candy and we're going to start reducing the image so that the picture is not going to be about eight inches wide like we built it, but it's going to be about a half inch wide when we cut it. We're going to take this big log of candy and we're going to start pulling it into rods. And to do this, we put it on our batch roller and we roll it out and the image comes out if we do it right with minimal distortion. Now this isn't the only pumpkin we make. This is the pumpkin spice. We make a straight pumpkin candy also for Halloween, and we'll probably have a completely different video about that coming up in a few weeks with our Halloween assortment. One thing I don't think I've shown you before is we produce a lot more rods than this one cooling table can hold. So we take it back to the candy cooling table that's currently running water in it and will cool down these rods remarkably quickly. And we give it its last cooling there before we cut them up. All that's left to do is to cut up these little pieces on the candy anvil. We've been asked if we speed up this footage, but no. This is just how fast you have to do it. Believe it or not, it's harder to do slowly. Thank you for watching. If you want to try this candy yourself, you can get it on our website, www.pd.net. You can also get it at our store if you come to Tallahassee and visit. And we encourage you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But here on YouTube, you really should set up notifications for the Lofty Pursuits channel as well as subscribe to it. You see, we've started to do live videos and live streams. We don't tend to leave those up. They're interesting, but I don't think they're archival. So if you want to catch them, you better get the notification. If you made it all the way to the end, there's a little treat coming up on September 15th, 2018. That's our 25th anniversary party. And we're gonna do a live stream around 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, that's GMT minus five, from our store. So if you wanna catch it, please watch. We couldn't have made it for 25 years without customers like you. Thank you.